MySci's very first virtual Illuminate event, a night for those that light up MySci. My name is Anna Sterner, and I'll be your MC this evening. We are so excited to welcome you to this brand new format of Illuminate. Um, you might recognize me from MySci's Echo Live program, which launched back in March, less than a week after schools closed here in Michigan. Since then, we've provided 99 episodes of science content live over the internet, so you can say that I'm no stranger to presenting through this format, but I'm very appreciative to all of you who are taking the jump with us, joining us for a brand new type of Illuminate, um, and joining us here online for the first time. Now, there are benefits to this. I hope that all of you are cozied up at home on your couch or recliner with your family and pets close by, um, getting nice and cozy watching Illuminate safely from the comfort of your own home. But don't get too comfortable because this night is still going to be exciting and interactive. You can still interact with me, with our MySci staff, board members, and with our generous donors in the chat feature. As I say on every episode of Echo Live, if you haven't done so already, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat feature. Tell us who you are, where you're watching from, and why you are excited to see us here at Illuminate tonight. Speaking of MySci board members, I can see that Ken Kelzer has actually just joined us here tonight. Um, Ken Kelzer has served on MySci's board for the last six years. He is a VP at General Motors who has worked to help us bring exciting exhibit experiences to MySci, like our GM Marble Wall and the Earth, Wind and Weather Gallery, which is launching just a little bit later on this year. In just a moment, we're going to patch Ken in live so that I can be the first person to make an exciting announcement. If you don't know, after 36 years with GM, Ken is retiring this year. I want to be the first one to say congratulations, Ken, on your retirement, and thank you so much for your service to my side these past six years. I know that you are going to be greatly missed around here, but we really do wish you all the best on your next exciting chapter. Hey, Anna, thanks for reaching out, and uh, good evening to everyone, and uh, thanks for joining Illuminate, another awesome evening with the uh, Michigan Science Center and the entire team. Uh, and, and thanks for recognizing the, uh, the work the last couple of years on the board and it isn't about what I did on the board, it's what the entire team did at the Michigan Science Center. One of, one of the things over the years that I thought was fun is how the team builds on ideas and takes them to another level. And one of the things that we started with is this marble wall that is now, I think, one of the most popular things that are in the Science Center, and yet how we built upon that, and that turned into something real that, that kids really truly enjoy. And the other thing, and, is in, and the team, is all the work that's taking place virtually. So the Science Center, to its core, many times is the physicalities of touching things and getting the interest. But look what all the wonderful things that have been taking place over the last few months. It's a true testament to the success of the team that's, that's really pulling this thing together. So thanks for that, Anna. Thanks for that. Thanks to the entire team at the Michigan Science Center. And thanks to everyone for joining Illuminate because it is an awesome experience. Appreciate it very much, and I'm humbled by the reach out here. Thank you. If you know Ken or have had the pleasure of working with him, please feel free to send him your own congratulations and thank you for his support of my site in the chat feature. Um, use the chat feature throughout the program to interact with each other and with us here at the Michigan Science Center coming to you live tonight. And thank you so much, Ken, for your praise of my size virtual programs. It really means a lot to hear praise for our team who's really worked hard this year to bring a lot of our experiences online for the first time. We, despite closing to the public back in March, we never stopped serving our community. In fact, we doubled down on providing exciting science content online. Even though we were closed and I had to move my studio home to my basement, we provided um, every single weekday 30 minutes of live science content. Thank you to Ford and Denso who continue to sponsor Echo Live and continue allowing us to serve our audience where they are at. We have had a lot of fun. I've gotten to make a lot of messes at home and no one is more thankful than I am to be back here at my side, blowing stuff up, lighting stuff on fire and making the mess where I don't have to worry about the mess that I'm making on my own carpet. Um, so if anyone's looking to make a small donation perhaps towards a carpet cleaning service, feel free to reach out to me after the show. This is Illuminate, right? Um, but in all seriousness, Echo Live is our way to serve our audiences who are really missing those science experiences that they would get in a classroom environment or by taking a trip to MySci in a time where that just hasn't been possible. But we've still made science learning fun online. We've gotten to teach all sorts of amazing science experiments just like the one we are about to do now. If you had a chance to gather the materials that we send out in our email RSVP link, now is a time to get those things ready. We asked you to, um, to bring some vinegar, baking soda, 
a large pitcher, um, some tea candles, and a lighter. What we are going to be making is an invisible fire extinguisher using a gas called carbon dioxide. We're gonna take our baking soda and add that down into your pitcher or your large glass first. And we might be pretty familiar with how this reaction when these two As we pour in our vinegar, we can see a massive amount of bubbles forming right there inside. Now the bubbles are cool, but what we're really looking for is this invisible gas that we just created. Now, if you didn't light your candles before we got started tonight, understandably so, now's a great time to get those lit because our carbon dioxide is actually going to stay right here inside the pitcher where we left it. This pitcher is full of an invisible gas that's much denser than air. We'd love to talk about combustion on Echo Live, and we like to talk about the fire triangle, meaning that these tea light candles need fuel, heat, and oxygen in order to continue burning. But this carbon dioxide gas is so dense, it's actually going to push all of the lighter oxygen molecules out and away from these flames, which is going to allow us to extinguish them using this invisible gas. Now, go ahead and pick up your pitcher or your glass, and what we're going to do is carefully pour just the gas, not the liquid, over your candle flames and take a look at what happens. Now, this is no trick, right? It's not magic, this is science. We have had a whole lot of fun online, off-site, and right here at the Michigan Science Center so far this year. So let's take a look at some of the exciting things that we've accomplished so far. If you feel inspired to make a donation to the Michigan Science Center throughout our program tonight, if you feel especially inspired by anything that you see in these videos, you can feel free to click the MySci logo that's in the corner of your screen, or click the link in the chat to be brought to our donation page. Let's take a look. So we've got dry ice, this is uh, carbon dioxide in solid form and it's sublimating in the water and we'll have lots of different experiments and activities for the kids to see. Yep. Just immediately go ahead and pop those in your mouth. Okay. Chew with your mouth open. Oh wow. And Derek is a dragon. STEM activator Raul Orozco doing a fire demonstration at the Michigan Science Center. What we're going to do here is we're going to speed up the oxidation process, and that's why this is going to appear green. It's just one of the many activities and exhibits from space to steel. So much to learn. I learned that you can have a lot of fun here. With zoos and museums forced to close since the pandemic hit, some places are getting pretty creative while still making it fun for kids at home. For all you junior scientists out there, check this out. The Michigan Science Center has launched interactive demonstrations for kids. We do these programs every weekday at 2.30 p.m. They are live on our Facebook and our YouTube channel, and families can join in, watch us do some crazy science experiments. Here we go, three, two, one. What's cool about magnesium is when you burn it over a flame, it burns incredibly bright. We've got um, some pretty simple materials here and we can make a real functional musical instrument using just popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and some chopped up drinking straws. And so you just hold it up and blow air right through. <laughs> Let me try mine. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Welcome back to Michigan Matters. We're now joined by Christian Greer, who is the president and CEO of the Michigan Science Center. It's been a chaotic year and it's affected us greatly uh, from our fundraising to our general operations to how we manage staff. The Michigan Science Center is reopening for business Friday, July 10th. And thanks to a generous donation, admission is free, won't cost you a thing. We do have a really fun science activity to show you in a little bit. First, we wanna talk about how families are social distancing. Hi everyone, I'm Lucy Yuen from Ford Motor Company and come see Michigan Science Center's first autonomous vehicle or AV self-driving display.
thank you so much to our sponsors and our members who have continued to stick by my side and continue to support us as we embark on this new chapter. I don't think anyone could have predicted the types of obstacles we faced this year, but we are inspired to continue serving our audiences no matter where they're at. To get an update on one of our most meaningful initiatives rooted right here in the city of Detroit, we'll get an update next from Andrea Harp, our community partnership manager for the STEMinista project. We'll also get a chance to check in with just a few of the families who benefited from our online programs this summer. To be a STEMinista means to be a girl in STEM. When I grow up, I will be a chemical engineer. The STEMinista project is our effort to engage fourth through eighth grade girls in life-changing STEM activities. The really amazing part about the STEM Easter project is that we connect those girls to amazing women in STEM. By engaging our girls um, and, and connecting them to these role models in hopes of preparing them for opportunities that they may have in STEM in the future. We love the Science Center so much. They really inspire me because there are so many role models that work there and I really look up to all the staff. I think having a mentor is so, so powerful. And so when I think about our role models and mentors, I really think about people who are helping to take our girls to the next level. Companies like Ford and GM are really, really pivotal. They really have helped us by volunteering at many of our activities, as well as facilitating many of our hands-on activities that take place right here at the Michigan Science Center. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Because of COVID-19, we've switched to a virtual platform where girls get to engage with us in the very same way, but online. I went to the last STEM and Easter project camp of the summer and it was the, the create your own business. She had an idea for a nail polish and she pitched it with so much uh, excitement and enthusiasm. I have asthma and skin sensitivities, so I wanted to make a nail polish that I could use. I actually won the pitch competition and I got the $500 check. And it was really cool because I got, I got to start my own business. I do see myself in Kayla and, and many of the girls that we work with. I think that 2021 is going to be another year of growth for the STEM and Easter project. I'm really excited that this year we're going to be heavily focusing on career exploration, where we'll be connecting our girls virtually to more of those role models, as well as continuing to offer amazing virtual opportunities in coding and anything else that our girls are interested in. We are here for them. To our Illuminate audience, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for your continued support, and we hope that you will continue supporting the STEM and Easter project as we move forward to the future. This is my new instrument. Michigan Science Center made the summer really fun for me. This right here is a plasma globe. I love all the classes and I had great instructors and I learned so much that I could go on for days. When COVID was categorized as a pandemic in March of 2020, all of the children went from having multiple extracurricular activities to being confined to the house. And we wanted to know what we could do virtually to help her to continue to learn and grow and develop in this new environment that we didn't ask for and that we didn't anticipate. We're gonna have a really good, interesting discussion and an exploration like we always do on Echo Live. A friend told me about Echo Live on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the school year and our daughter enjoyed it immensely. She was so excited to share every day what she had learned and that was the highlight of our days. 
So what you can see behind me in our virtual background in our Echo Distance Learning Studio is that we can see some of those Aurora Borealis happening. My favorite part about science is learning about all the different molecules and atoms and just learning how things are made. Elise took part of uh, two, two programs that Michigan Science Center offered the Echo Live series, um, as well as the Spark Summer Camp. This one's higher pitch, this one's lower pitch, and you saw my rain shaker. The program instructors, Anna, Julie, and Maggie, all did a phenomenal job. The program is tremendous. Hi, I'm Evan B, and I'm about to do some elephant toothpaste. Hello, I am Helena Barris, and this is Evan, and we live in South Lake, Texas. The whole way we found out about the Michigan Science Center, given that we live in Texas, was we were just watching the NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt one evening, and we saw this interesting interview about the Michigan Science Center. Joining us now is Anna Sterna from the Michigan Science Center. And then we started watching previous episodes, then we started tuning in to the live episodes and I've watched every single episode live. Our sun is 93 million miles away and even that far away you can still feel the heat of it, right? Go ahead, throw that inside. My favorite thing is the 50th episode when we blew up the pumpkins and melons. I promised you you wouldn't want to miss that reaction. I've learned a lot about paleontology, geology, and what I love about science is there's so much more to explore. It has just made that curiosity and that interest even more fulfilling. And then Evan also participated in two of the Spark Camps this summer. We definitely thank the Michigan Science Center for making these uh, challenging and different last few months more interesting and bringing excitement and even routine into our schedule. See you later. Wow. We hope you'll join us for Echo Live's 100th episode this upcoming Wednesday. It'll be live on MySize Facebook and YouTube channel at 2.30 p.m. And take it from Evan, if you thought the 50th episode was something awesome to watch, you will not want to miss this. It's going to be a great time. This year has been challenging, but I think we've proved that we can overcome. We are going to continue inspiring the next generation of science minds People like Kayla, like Elise, and like Evan, who's joining us here tonight. Next, we'll hear from MySize President and CEO Christian Greer about some of the obstacles we've faced this year and our path forward with some exciting announcements about the year to come. At the Michigan Science Center, our goal is really to put you at the center of science. We are an informal education facility and we certainly want young people, especially young kids and families to come here and feel comfortable in the space, feel like they can explore and look around and try to understand the world through a different lens, the lens of science, technology, engineering and math. The Michigan Science Center is your hub for STEM. You know, we connect with lots of different science organizations, companies, universities, we work with NASA. We have a NASA solar system ambassador. A lot of people don't know that. And we bring that information here to make it easy for you to access it. We have science as our middle name. And that's an important thing to recognize. It's part of our DNA. When I first walked into the building, I was floored. It's such an interesting design. The architecture is unique. We have several theaters here. We have a planetarium theater. We have an IMAX dome theater, which is actually in our basement. We even have a DTE Sparks Energy Theater where you get a chance to learn about electromagnetism. It's an incredible set of exhibits and, and activities, but the thing that powers this building more than anything is the people. We really try to connect with our audience, meet them where they are, and inspire them to discover science for themselves. Kids come in excited. They come in excited to interact with this environment and we definitely want them to think that they can be a scientist, technologist, engineer, or mathematician, whatever they want to be. Hopefully we can inspire them to pursue those dreams. I want to work at NASA 
and be an astronaut. When I grow up, I will be a chemical engineer. In this age of STEM, where STEM really powers our economy, it's amazing to think with so much emphasis that's on STEM and K-12 education that we still have a gap. Right here in the state of Michigan, less than half of our students are really proficient in science and math. And is that okay? Or do we wanna make a difference? And we're trying to integrate ourselves to be a hub. And that hub concept is so important to the Michigan Science Center because it allows us to be able to tap in to a network of possibilities in STEM that allow us to lift up the opportunities for the people in the state of Michigan and right here specifically in Detroit. And I'm hoping that some little kid that walks through this building that is the first person to walk on Mars got their start right here at the Michigan Science Center. Why can't we be that place to inspire the next generation of STEM pioneers? We're in an interesting time right now, and the Michigan Science Center is situated to make a difference. 2020 has been a surprising year. It's full of surprises. COVID-19 touched everyone in ways that, that we weren't prepared for. This really hit us hard. This crisis is, it was more than a crisis. It was something that was, was so challenging and so different that we had to almost unthink, not rethink, or reimagine, we had to almost unthink about the way we normally would approach things. It challenged us to think about our finances, it challenged us to think about our expenses, and it challenged us more importantly to think about our staff. And our board was right there the entire time supporting us. I have never felt more support from a nonprofit board than what I felt during COVID-19. Our board stood there, they, they stepped up, they supported us financially, they went out and got us connections, and more importantly, they told us it was gonna be okay, we were gonna work together. And when you know you're in a crisis and you have people that are standing uh, together and they are on the same page, you feel like you can accomplish anything. And I have to tell you, the one vote of confidence that we got that kicked everything off for us was DTE Energy. They stepped up in a big way at a time in which we needed the most and told us that this was general operating. It's like your grandparent giving you that card for your birthday and saying, here's this check, I believe in you, do something great with it. It's also important to recognize that individuals keep nonprofits afloat too. And the Wiser family has been there for this organization throughout its existence in getting it restarted. And in a time of crisis, they stepped up big, created a challenge grant fund that the board responded to and staff even responded to, to help give to my side, to help us get through this difficult time. There are lots of socioeconomic, racial disparities and things that we deal with every day with some of the kids that come here. And compounded with COVID-19, it's an even more challenging situation because they can't visit the Science Center as school groups anymore. So we have decided to make sure that we have lots of different ways to connect with youth, especially the ones that are in the margins, on-site, off-site, and online. When we shut our doors in March, we were in a little bit of a, of, of a crisis beyond just the pandemic that we were all feeling individually and personally. We also had an organization and a facility that was disconnected to the students we normally serve at a time in which they spend a lot of time visiting here on field trips. What is the future of a field trip? Well, we have to figure out new ways to facilitate that same great experience, but do it virtually, do it online. And when we launched our Echo Live program, which was sponsored by Ford and Denso, and facilitated by Anna Sterner, who did a fantastic job kicking it off for lots of other educators to participate that are in our facility, what she was really trying to do was to extend a hand to people at home so they could learn there too and recognize that school doesn't just happen in school. It happens in your natural environment and world. And what better organization to help facilitate that than an informal education focused facility like the Michigan Science Center. And that is where we bridged. That's where we served as a hub. That's where we made a difference. And our supporters help us make that very difference every single day.
a lot of museums aren't even open. They decided not to reopen for financial reasons. Or maybe they wanted to wait it out and kind of see what would happen with the economy or with visitation. But we decided we weren't going to wait. As soon as we had an opportunity to reopen, we were going to take that chance. But the team was very concerned that given the economic impacts of COVID-19, people might not have the disposable income to pay general admission to come to MySci. And we approached Aramco to be able to support a free summer of science. And Aramco believed in us enough to be able to support that summer of science that would be free. It's one of the good things that happened out of 2020 is giving people access. Are you ready? One, two, three. One of the cool things about reopening is we didn't just reopen with the same old stuff. The exhibits that we've had there for years, we, we actually added some new things. And one of the coolest new features that we added to our exhibit floor was our Ford Autonomous Vehicle Exhibit. As soon as kids see it, they want to jump inside of it, they want to take a selfie, and they want to learn about things like LiDAR and sensors and artificial intelligence. And to have the actual engineers at Ford that work on the real vehicles, work on the exhibit here, was fantastic. <laughs> we have a lot of cool new things coming to the Michigan Science Center. I mean, whole new exhibit galleries are going to be built. And one of them is called Earth, Wind, and Weather. This exhibit was sponsored by General Motors, and it's an exhibit that gets you in touch with your planet. The Zatkoff Family Legacy Fund, as well as Harmon, will be supporting augmented parts of the exhibit, from a new sound system that allows you to be able to hear a thunder clap, to other features that really tie you to an understanding of our atmosphere, weather patterns, and just some of the things you see every day. We're gonna have a tornado that you can see up close and personal. It's gonna open this fall and it's gonna be an exciting addition to all of the 220 plus exhibits that we have here already. We're working on our theaters and expanding and bringing new shows to our planetarium, our IMAX dome. There's a lot of uncertainty surrounding COVID-19 in the future, the impacts it has on nonprofits like ours, the impacts it has on STEM. But the one thing that is certain is that my side will continue to exist to do this work, to put people at the center of science. We wanna to continue to do that as we finish off 2020 and also leading into next year in 2021. We expect there will be a new normal, but we're gonna to adapt to that new normal and continue on-site, off-site and online programs at the Michigan Science Center, the future is bright. And I'm not just saying that because of Illuminate, but because of all the supporters, people like you, that are gonna take us into the future and beyond. Speaking of new and exciting things at MySci, we just received news from Governor Whitmer that our movie theaters are going to reopen to the public next week, starting right here in the Toyota 4D Theater with our new movie, Backyard Wilderness. Our last speaker of the night will be Eileen Weiser, a MySci board member, with a special message for all of you that are joining us here at Illuminate tonight. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to use some notes to keep this under four hours. When the Detroit Science Center went into bankruptcy in 2012, I was serving on the State Board of Education and the federally mandated board that oversees the nation's report card, the only valid measure of student achievement in the country. As we watched Michigan's student outcomes spiraling downward, my husband Ron and I could not imagine losing this museum and its programs too. With help from you and so many other committed supporters, we were able to purchase and hold it for the new Michigan Science Center Board. You believed in us then and now. We thank you. Validation for STEM education increases every year. Everything that Christian just said about our program's admission is absolutely accurate. My size board provides its vision, direction, and secures its funding. That keeps the museum open and presenting needed informal education programs that help students, teachers, STEM employers, and our community. There is no more graphic illustration of why MySci needs to exist than what COVID-19 has done to our families, our community, and our nation. STEM knowledge and competence help us ride Mother Nature's bucking bronco while meeting the technological advances that are coming at us 24-7, 365. Deep STEM understanding and literacy 
is essential for the security of our citizens, our democracy, and our economy. MySci is open despite huge challenges and costs, while our schools and many other museums are not. Your belief in informal STEM education, combined with the creative survival skills of our staff, board, and our donors, provide visitors a safe, interesting, and educational respite during this very difficult time. Why is MySci so committed? Even when students are in school, their formal education doesn't include what we provide, open-ended exploration and creativity, along with a safe space to be intrigued, engaged, and curious to find answers. In normal times, my side puts the icing on the K-12 STEM cake, with so little available to our children and our families. Right now, my side is doing what it takes to get that cake into the oven, too. My side would be closed and shuttered without your support and confidence. You know why we're needed. We're looking for more partners just like you who value STEM and want to be part of our mission. As MySci evolves, we want to expand our community to include other industries like healthcare, logistics, aerospace, information technology, mobility, and others. We need your help to do that. We thank you for believing in us. We look forward to working with you as we explore together new ways for MySci to help our visitors reach a better tomorrow. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. This is Christian Greer, President and CEO of MySci. Wasn't that great? Illuminate 2020 has been fantastic. You've heard the stories, you've seen the smiles. This is a great time for us as an organization. And I'd like to tell you, this is a good time for you to support us too. If you just look into the chat feature, you'll see the link to donate to MySci. Whether it's $10, $100, or $1,000, all of it makes a difference. We're asking for participation tonight. We'd like everyone to give something, something to support this organization to take us into the future. Now, before we conclude the night, we have one more surprise for you, and that is another demonstration by Anna Sterner. I think you're gonna enjoy it. All right, what better way to close out Illuminate tonight than with the same experiment we used to launch Echo Live all the way back in March. We are going to combine some freezing cold, actually well below freezing cold liquid nitrogen with some boiling hot water. This liquid nitrogen is negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit. When we mix this with our very, very hot boiling water, we are going to rapidly vaporize the liquid nitrogen down inside the bucket, sending a giant cloud flying into the air. Here we go. Everyone get ready at home for our last demonstration of the night in three, two, one. <laughs> and while we wait for the fog to clear, I want to say thank you all so much for joining us at Illuminate again this year. It's been such a fantastic night. Um, and we hope that all of you will plan to join us in our Zoom Afterglow um, taking place right after this program. There will be an opportunity to interact with me, Christian, and members of the MySci board, including Bob Lee from FCA. So stick around, wait for the link to come up in the chat, and I hope I'll see you all there. Have a great evening, everyone, and thanks again. <laughs>